cultivating abbondanza. That's how the Italians say abundance, cultivating abundance. Are you ready to cultivate abundance? When is the last time you checked in on the law and how you were using it with regards to cultivating abundance and prosperity? To take an inventory of how you are interacting with the field of consciousness that is the absolute field of consciousness that is God consciousness that is all source. We're here to check in, aren't we? That's part of our spiritual growth, part of our work on the path is to check in and to look at when we need to do any updates or upgrades to our system. Look at where there might be new programs that we're not utilizing that we didn't see were available before. I have three do's and don'ts of prosperity cultivation today. Are you ready for them? Three do's and three don'ts. There is so much to talk about about prosperity. We could be here for a year. In Unity, we have a lot of prosperity courses, courses that teach tithing, that teach abundance consciousness, that teach what prosperity and abundance really is or can be on the spiritual practice. We have a course every year and we have different courses that go from eight weeks, anywhere eight weeks to 12 weeks so that people have a safe environment to try on these practices. To try on these practices so that they can see if they can make them come alive in their life in a supportive environment. David Owen Ritz, who is the author of Keys to the Kingdom, says this, which is one of our greatest prosperity courses. He says, any truth that is new to you, if it is to be embodied, it must be acted upon. If it is to be embodied, it must be acted upon. A lot of us want to embody prosperity and abundance in our lives. But if we don't have the courage to act upon the law, then we find ourselves in a little bit of a conundrum. We find ourselves in this place going, well, I know there's, you know, I've heard this, that there's a law out there. I've seen people's transformation happen, but I'd like to know it's going to happen before I practice the law, before I try it on, before I get it. In order for a law to come to life, it has to come to life through us. It cannot come to life to us. So, you are an inlet and an outlet of God. Is that news to anyone here? You are an inlet and an outlet of God. So what practices help support that truth so that we can activate abundance in our lives? And why study spiritual practices relating to abundance consciousness? In scripture, it says in Luke 12, 27, consider the lilies how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. So we're told in scripture that the lilies don't worry. One of my other favorite passages is fear not little flock for it is the father's great pleasure to give you the kingdom. Fear not. So the lilies aren't worrying. The scripture says, which is our metaphysical guidebook, it says, Get over it, it's all good. So why study? Why study the laws of abundance and prosperity? Why practice it in a spiritual place? Why not just go to work, do the things we know how to do in the human condition, and experience abundance? A lot of people do, right? They go to work, experience abundance in the human condition. So why do we merge our spiritual practice with our abundance consciousness? Well, because we're not lilies. Well, we have a lily, but we're not lilies, are we? We're not lilies, and we have free will, free choice to activate a principle or to concern ourselves, to separate ourselves in mind, not in truth, but in mind from our source, and to go, where is my good coming from? And use our faculty of co-creation to separate ourselves seemingly from abundance. So the reason we study is because by studying, we align not to change God mind, but we study, we practice, and we pray to align our minds with abundance and source consciousness that is always flowing, 
that is an infinite fountain that is available to each one of us in every moment. We study to transcend the drama of the human condition. The drama of being human is a little bit of a resistance to getting on with our spiritual purpose and our spiritual passion. It has a little bit of resistance to that. It's logical that if we focused on the human condition and the outer circumstances, that we would make changes. That's what we're taught. That's what we inherit. But true changes and deep changes and deep transformations come within. They always come from a shift in consciousness, a shift in awareness, a shift from the invisible, the idea state, not from changing the form. When we shift from changing the form, we simply rearrange things. But in order to experience pure abundance, true abundance, we have to transcend on the inside the drama and get into our spiritual practice. So... This life is not about what we get, but what goes through us. What goes through me then touches the world and is my mark of prosperity on the world. It is not what I get. It is not necessarily even just what I give but it is what is activated through me, what goes through me. For however many years I am on this planet and in this form, the mark of prosperity and the abundance that is mine to co-create comes through what moves through me. That's all we have, isn't it? All we have is what moves through us continually the life force that is present within each one of us that binds us. So what is this law? What are these laws and what is abundance? The law that we teach as far as unity is concerned is that there is the personal experience of God consciousness and that's the love, that's the the peace where we feel nourished and nurtured. And then there's law. To some spiritual practitioners, that is not a very exciting idea. To think of God as law is not a very nourishing, lovey, mama, papa, mm, idea. But if we fail to investigate God as law, we can find ourselves not receiving the fullness of God as personal. Because we tend to then inherit, create, or ideate our own ideas that somehow we live in a a limited universe, that somehow God is somewhere holding something back from us. When in fact, it is simply a matter of understanding another language of God, God as law. This law operates just like mathematics does. Two plus two equals four. Does it matter who uses the first two and the second two and puts them together? Does it matter if we do it in one state or another state? Does it matter what job you have? Does it matter what family you're born with? Does it matter what bank account you have? Does it matter your education level? No, if you can understand the law, if you can get that law, that two plus two equals four, anyone can utilize it and activate it and get the same results they will get four. That is God as law. Now there's a couple other pieces to God as law that have to do with abundance and prosperity consciousness. One is that It is inexhaustible. God is inexhaustible. So those ideas in consciousness that can come up that say, well, if I prosper, I don't want to take away from anyone else. If I prosper, I don't want to take away from anyone else, so maybe I shouldn't prosper. According to spiritual law, that's impossible. That would not be prospering, and that would not be abundance. God is inexhaustible. Everyone can drink from this fountain of life as much as fulfills their needs and it will be there and available for every other person and being on the planet. Because when we are in alignment with spirit, when we are in harmony, when we are in wisdom, then every time we activate the law, we actually become more of an inlet and an outlet. We expand our ability to be an inlet and an outlet for all that is God. So we not only expand that source by bringing that source into creation, but we expand that source by demonstrating that source so that others can see, ah, 
I don't have to live by those rules. There's other rules, there are other laws, and if I learn them, I too can shift my experience. God as inexhaustible. The second is God as everywhere present. The idea that there is no place God is not. There is no place God is not. So wherever we are, the fullness of God consciousness is. Wherever we are, in whatever stage of life, and whatever circumstance, do you believe that? That means there's no economy where God is not. There is no country where God is not. There is no government where God is not. There is no person where God is not. The absolute inexhaustible source is everywhere present at every moment of our lives. We sometimes tend to think that we have somehow gotten out of the good graces of God, that we have somehow become undeserving or somehow have become victimized or somehow have made some poor choices that have led us to be out of the grace of that goodness. But that's taking the God as personal concept which is all about absolute love and nourishment and applying it to law. Law doesn't work like that. It's impersonal. You could violate the law and then come back the next day and activate it. It holds no grudge. It holds no record. It is there to be utilized. It is the divine birthright of every being. We live in an abundant universe, and we can see that abundance if we look around at the lavish expression all around us. This impersonal law is here to show us that we are a channel for source. In our unity kind of encyclopedia, which is the revealing word, Charles Fillmore says this about prosperity. The consciousness of God as the abundant, everywhere present resource unfailing, ready for all who open themselves to it through faith. In demonstrating prosperity, you should give praise and thanks for every little evidence of financial improvement. Be confident of the immediate cooperation of God's Spirit with you in bringing to pass that for which you have given thanks. I'm going to share with you a couple of the, the bits on the law. The all-providing law, an important law to know about when we're looking at prosperity. The all-providing law. God is the all-providing law, the spiritual substance out of which is made everything that everyone needs. The father who supplies his children bountifully out of his own abundance. God is mind. God is mind. The offspring of mind is you. It's me. We are the offspring of mind. To know the law of God, humanity must adjust their minds to God mind. So our task is to adjust our minds to God mind. The first step in applying this law is recognition of this law as truth. Unless God is known as the source of all supply, men look to the material world for support. This violates the law and breaks the connection with the one source of all good. I'll say that again. Unless God is known as the source of all supply, men look to the material world for support. This violates the law and breaks the connection with the one source of all good. And I would edit Fillmore a little bit to say it doesn't break the source. It breaks our awareness of the source. Our awareness, which in any human experience is all we have, is our awareness The source is always there. So, what are the three don'ts when we're looking at prosperity consciousness? Three blind spots that I have seen applied to one's financial prosperity consciousness are these. Are you ready? 
Are you ready to fully check in? See if there's anywhere, if there's any place that you can apply these and look at that and go, hmm, maybe that's for me to take on this week, this month, this year. The first is, how well are you taking care of what you've got? How well are you caring for what you've got? Part of abundance and inviting in is stewarding what we have. How well do we take care of our bank accounts, aligning them with our intention? How well do we take care of our vehicles, our homes, our relationships, our bodies? How well are we taking care of what we have? Because if we're not taking care of what we have and then we say more, 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 vibrationally, what we're showing is, I'm already overwhelmed with what I've got. So the mind is saying, I want more. I want a better house. I want a nicer neighborhood. I want a this. I want a that. I want a soulmate. I want, a, uh, I want my you know, grandchildren to call me. I want this. I want that, right? But how well are we circulating the absolute source and circulating that good? How well are we caring for what we have? Because more than in mental thought, we think the universe hears in the language of vibration more than the language of just mental thought. So if we're saying, ah, I'm just going to, you know, everything's just going to be schleppy, schloppy all over here. I'm not saying, look at how I am honoring the good that's coming to me and through me. If when I receive money and when I give my money, if I'm not blessing it and pausing, What am I saying? This is meaningless. This has nothing to do with source. This is just cash. This has nothing to do with ideas. This is just cash. This has nothing to do with my birthright and what spiritual gifts are born in me that unfolded as beautiful miracles of connection with other people in my life so that I could give. And then in that giving, I would receive. And the miracle and the beauty of it that I get my food, I get my electricity, I get all of these things from that gorgeous law of circulation. So are we caring for what we've got? And the second one is, am I being a vibrational match for what I'm wanting to bring into my life? Am I creating a vibrational match for what I am wanting to bring into my life? Sometimes when we see people have what we want, we acknowledge it, we see it, right? And then an interesting little thing can come up sometimes, and it's called envy, jealousy, criticism, depression, poor me, victim, right? All of these things you can hear just as I'm saying these words, right? All of these things. Take that idea. You're, we're, we're visioning and we're saying what we want more of, right? We want something good that makes us feel good, that feels like a pure expression of God consciousness. And then when we see it out there, you see it happening, our energy field goes, hmm, 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 hmm. In 1976, when I did this, that lost that opportunity, and it'll never come around again. In 1982, this happened to my bank account, and uh, that was the economy, and so everything would have been different if that hadn't happened. In uh, 19, whatever it was, I was married to that person. They had a great job, and well, that stuff's never going to happen. I just don't have the connections that that person has. They must have had some good connections. They must know someone in the business. They must have had a parent that brought them to unity. (laughs) I didn't have that. I didn't have anyone. All of those things are not vibrational matches for when we see what we're looking to create more of. Those are actually vibrational toxins that push that away, that say when God is demonstrating God consciousness, beautiful source, purity through someone else, it says, "Mm, 
That doesn't say, bring it on, me too. So are we willing to trade in those vibrational fields, those thoughts, those emotions? Are we willing to trade them in and instead shape shift? And when we see success, when we see abundance, when we see love, when we see these beautiful expressions of God consciousness, when we see amazing spiritual gifts shared, are we willing to say, that's what I'm talking about? That's what I'm talking about. Me too. That's what I'm talking about. Because that practice is a breath away. A breath away. And I say a breath because we have to pause. The moment we hear our minds running a racket that is not in alignment with pure source, that is not in alignment with abundance, all we are asked to do is stop, breathe, reconnect to what we are already connected to and to acknowledge the fullness of source where we see it and go, that's what I'm talking about. That's a beautiful gift. That's a guy that puts his gift into action. That's a guy that talks about his gifts. That's a guy that acts on them, right? I want to see more of those guys. I want to be with more of those women. I want to allow myself to demonstrate what I know I can demonstrate because I see other people have activated the law and that is my holy good news. That's my good news, that I've seen other people activate the law. So we can say, hmm, I see that going on, me too. Thank you. Thank you to each other for demonstrating the gifts. Thanking each other for demonstrating abundance. That gratitude is the vibrational match for experience. That is what leads to embodying something, trying it on, activating it. The next is this. Are we circulating our good and what are we doing as we circulating our good? As we circulate our good, are we paying for things? Are we just spending our money or are we blessing it? What is the feeling? And this is a, this is a fun one to do. But what is the feeling and just... Just take a moment here and think about some of your bills. Credit card bills or electricity bills. This has been a nice winter. Mortgage, anything. Think about any of your bills, right? Just get it in mind. You're paying your bills right now. Paying your credit card. See, we feel good when we're spending money, don't we? Like when you're swiping it, right? That feels good, right? When you get it, that feels good. How does it feel when we spend it? How does it feel when we spend it? If when we spend it, it's not a match for that good feeling of when we, you know, save it, when we spend it, when we get it. If that feeling, and when we're writing our bills, we go, ah, oh, they're taking this money, ah, oh, that credit card bill, they want their money back, ah. Oh. And not even they want their money back for, for the probably general consciousness is they're taking something from me, right? Like, they're taking something from me. Not like old school a long, long time ago where if you wanted to buy something and you didn't have the funds to do it, you would say, hello, brothers and sisters, is there anyone that has an extra whatever it is that I could borrow? Could I borrow that? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Judy. I appreciate that. I will give it to you back in a year, and I will give you even a little bit more just because you're so nice. And I appreciate it. And you won't have it for a year, so I'll give you more. How do you think I would feel when I pay back that money in a year to Judy? How would I feel? Would I, would I feel like you're taking this from me? You really want it back? What do you mean? Ugh. Mm. Write that check. Son, it's built up so much. Now I've got to pay back Judy. I've got to pay back you. I've got to pay back you. I've got to pay back you. All these people just want my money. Hmm. Is that gratitude? Is that a match for abundance? It really is something to look at in consciousness. Because if I can, when I pay back those credit cards, whether I do it every month or whether I have a debt and I'm seeing it every month, if I'm seeing it, and I'm not blessing it, and I'm not going, wow, look at all the good I've created from this. Or, wow, look at the mistakes that I've learned from when I created that, and that I'm not going to do again, and that's so fantastic that I've learned so fast. 
If I cannot bless it and be really conscious of it and say, thank you for that support. I am proud of myself. I am happy. I am grateful and I am willing to give it back. Thanks. Thanks for having my back. Thanks for showing me that we're all connected and that there is a place I can go to if I'm not experiencing the fullness of the law in this moment. Thanks for being an avenue, not the source, but an avenue of source for me. Namaste, right? Can we shift into that consciousness? Can when we write all of our checks, can we set up a sacred area for ourselves so that as we write them, we're blessing. Thank you for this electricity. Some of you in this very sanctuary have told me that you grew up in homes that didn't have electricity and running water. You have a different appreciation, a different knowing for what that means and maybe a difference when you write your electricity bill. Maybe you go, ah, thank you to everyone who works there. Thank you to everyone who invented this that brings it right into my home. You rock. I appreciate it. And I'm happy to circulate this back to you for your life so that you can go to the grocery store and buy your children food and send them to school so that you have warmth in your own home. Thank you, brother. Thank you, sister. It's a completely different consciousness. So I invite us this week to check into the three don'ts because simply working that edge can transform your experience of abundance, prosperity, and your own finances. Now, for the three do's, you probably already got them. Who wants to guess what one of the big do's is? Tithe. That's good. That's a good one. We like that one. No, I'm just kidding about that. Um, that is the practice. You could call it tithing. You could call it activating the law of circulation. But it is circulating. We are an inlet and an outlet of all that is God. If you decide you're not going to circulate with your body, just think about that for a second. If you decide I am no longer willing to consciously circulate with my body, obviously you're not going to be here very long or it's going to be very uncomfortable. So do not decide not to circulate with your life, with everything that comes to you and through you. Tithing means giving 10% of your income to where you're spiritually fed. So people that activate the tithing process go to their spiritual communities and they say, this is my spiritual nourishment. It is worth it. I want all of my finances to be blessed in this way, in this accord. So I am dedicating that first 10% to my spiritual practice as I intuit it, as I see it. Another practice is giving to where you're spiritually fed with the goal of tithing the goal of that 10%. So I am aware, I am looking. I might be at 3%, I might be at 7%, I might be 7% this year, 2% next year, 10%. But I am conscious of it, and I have the goal of tithing. That's what Joel Olstein teaches, to give in accord with your abundance, with your incoming good, with the goal of tithing. And then there's all of the other parts of circulation that sometimes get left out of the equation. Sometimes people fail to think that Prosperity and abundance is about anything more than money, majorly losing out on life, right? If we think that prosperity and abundance is just about money, we have completely missed the mark. It is about tithing your time, your talent, and your treasure. It is about circulating your intelligence to other people, circulating your love, your smiles, your good. It is also about dedicating time in your life to your spiritual practice. And if we don't dedicate our time and our spirit to our spiritual practice, how can we expand our ability to be an inlet and an outlet of all that is God? The second do is to get clear. Get clear on what your spiritual priorities are with your time, with your talent, and with your treasure. And check in and consciously say, I am ready to be in alignment with my values my spiritual practice, my consciousness. I'm ready to have all of this in alignment. And show me, sweet spirit, show me how to express that in form, what that looks like. And watch everything expand. And the next piece is to expand your vision. That's the third do. 
expand your vision of what abundance is. The universe will never lower itself to our limited definition of it. The universe will never lower itself to our definition of it. It is unchanging, it is absolute, and it is abundance. Just like our God concepts, God will never play as small as God is in our minds or is in our religions or is in our families, our communities. God will never play that small. God is. God is. It is law that is impersonal, and it is energy, life force, love that is purely personal. The only way to limit your good, the only way for me to limit my good is to limit my awareness. So be willing to see and notice that you are sitting on a gold mine. Namaste.